Good evening, everyone. Welcome. You guys at the back just want to grab your snacks and have a seat. Uh, my name is Keith Ryan. I'm the principal here at PPIS. Thank you. All right. Uh, welcome, welcome. It's such an exciting week. Super excited about Friday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start just by saying something that I, I've said a lot this year, so I apologize if you're hearing it again, but I think it's an important message for everyone, parents, students, just to, it, it, for you guys, it's almost just as reflection at this point, but a really important point that I'm going to keep saying in the future after you leave. So you've been coming here, most of you four years, some of you seven years. You come in, you do your academic day, go to performing arts classes, every day. We don't have like A, B schedules even, same schedule pretty much every day. Come in, do your academics till about 1.30, go to performing arts for an hour or two every single day. It just feels like school. For you, that's what school is, right? It's just normal, especially for high achieving students because you just do what you're told to do and you do it well. And it becomes normal, it feels like normal school. I just want to remind everyone, and I think you know this because you've heard me say it or somewhere deep down inside you know, it is not normal. It's not normal, it's super unique. And not only is it a unique experience for you individually, it's a unique experience from everyone on the outside looking in, especially people who are interested in you, right? So when we talk about colleges, People are looking at performers for career, right? They know. PPS is not a hidden. Early on, I've been at PPS for 20 years, right? Very early on, I used to hear it's a hidden gem. People didn't know so much about it, but if you found it, you had this sort of wonderful experience. We are so far beyond that. PPS is not a hidden anything. Very, very well known. It's not really just, it's not because of me as a principal, it's not because of any particular individual, it's because of what we've all done together for the last two decades, including you, in the last four or seven years, are a huge part of it, right? Colleges and universities spend millions of dollars on their recruitment branch. So they're going out, they're, they're studying where students are coming from, they want to know who they're bringing into their schools. They know PPAS. They know Rose's Theater Kids. They know Ailey. They know Waterwell. They know National Corral. They know what you've been doing, and they know that it's unique. They know that it's unique. There is no wonder that we have that incredible board of college acceptances. Give yourself a hand. It's amazing. And those of you who are sitting in this room are like hitting the highest points on that. So, it's one thing to finish high school in these incredibly challenging years, and you're going to hear it a lot, you'll hear it at graduation on Friday, everyone's going to be talking about what we did through the pandemic, and we should, we should talk about it, and we should celebrate it, because it is another level of uniqueness that you've gone through. So to finish school, to navigate through everything that we've navigated through, and to finish high school is one thing, and it's wonderful to go above and beyond and have a super high GPA or to com commit something to your community, uh, to do special things that you are receiving merit for from your community, that is above and beyond and super special. And I just want to welcome all the families and parents and friends and the students who are here tonight. It's really feels incredible more than ever because of what we've been through to acknowledge some of these things, right? that you can do what you've done through these years. So congratulations. I'm presenting some awards on behalf of people, so I'll come back up on the stage, but we're just going to go right into it. We're going to hear a lot of names and a lot of, there's a lot of talk, but we want to honor what you have done and what's brought you here tonight. So pay attention, give each other big applause. We're a small enough group that we're not going to say hold your applause, applause people. Right? You really deserve it. Um, and I think, I'm not sure who the, I don't know who's following me. If you're following me, just come on up. Let's see, who's next? I, 
Anaí. Ai, Anaí. Thank you, Ani. Uh, thanks so much. I think I'm going to bring up my, our MC for the evening, Ms. Tusserman. She is coming up. All right, Ms. Lizanne Tusserman, take it away. Thank you, sorry. So we're actually going to have the Black National Anthem lift every voice. So if you all could please stand and let's honor and recognize. Welcome, everyone. Um, what a privilege and honor it is to have such talented individuals be on this stage. Uh, we're going to get started here um, with asking our performing arts partners to, um, to acknowledge um, their, their, their pupils and to honor all the hard work that we as academic teachers
don't really get to see all the time until a wonderful show uh, is performed or a concert is sung. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up uh, Oscar. Good evening. <laughs> um, I, it, it's, it's always a joy to celebrate anything with the PPAS um, students. Um, some of my fondest memories it, is during the uh, West Africa, not West Africa, our West African performance in the Black History Month assemblies. And um, we haven't had one in a long time in person, and I look forward to the future. But, but our senior class did get to perform that. Um, yes, and it's quite an experience. But, but um, we're here to celebrate this journey that they took, right, for the four years. Um, it's not quite graduation, graduation's on Friday. Um, but, um, you know, it's a commitment that you made with these, in these last four years, and particularly for the, for the Ailey dancers, it's, it's grueling. Dancing is not easy um, to do it day in and day out. Takes, uh, it's taxing on the body, um, but these dancers uh, went above and beyond every time, and they still, they never ceased to su surprise me and amaze me and, and gain my respect, and I respect them uh, fully. I have these wonderful certificates. Um, they're, they're official certificates from the Ailey School. Uh, uh, certificates of Outstanding Achievement in Dance. Uh, and I would like to pass them out. So when you hear your name, just quickly come up. I'm, there's a lot of them, but uh, I'm going to get through them. So, Brianna Augusto. <laughs> yeah. Jade Bowen Jean. <laughs> okay. oh. Omarion Burke. Jaslyn Carreras. Jenna Carrieri. Nadia Chase. Serena Chang. Luella Cox. Caitlin. Uh, just drop sick. <laughs> I don't think they're here yet. It's Caitlin, Caitlin's here. Yeah. Samira Hill. Javar Martin. Oh, he changed his name. <laughs> Allison McCrink. Let's see. We have Ruby Guzman Perez. Ruby's not here. Okay, thank you. Mia Platoni, not here as well. It's Cole Rosenthal. Cole? Okay. Emma Tom. Michaela Williams. And Angela Z. Great. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you, these dancers mean the world to me. Uh, they're incredible, they're talented, uh, they were a joy to work with, and again, just, you know, if I could have every class like these dancers up here, it would, it would continue to be a joy teaching. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for the wonderful work and the way you've represented Ailey. Um, thank you. Now, um, I'm gonna need Omarion to step forward. Now, so, so uh, I, Omari and I go back way before PPAS. Um, I met him at Ailey Camp. Young, young, eager, eager, eager to dance. Um, and you could just see the talent oozing. Just, it's, you know, it's just like, it's in him, it had to be refined, right? You find a diamond in the dirt, you need to, shine it and polish it and, and make it 
what a diamond is, right? Because a diamond is beautiful. When you find a diamond, it's just, it's a diamond, right? But when you clean it, sharpen it, shape it, it shines brighter. And so that's what we do as in, in, in these techniques. We, we teach you how to shine brighter than you already shine. So uh, Armarion has been exceptional through the, through the time he's been at Ailey. Um, he's a presidential scholar. Um, he, he's represented PPAS to the highest, but as well the Ailey organization. And, and um, we truly see his, his potential, and I know I will see you on a big stage somewhere. Now, don't get me wrong, in choosing this award for Omarion, he be beat out a bunch of other very, very, very talented people. Okay, anybody up here, if this were Nebraska, Iowa, or whatever, each one of them would have, right? It, it be phenomenal, right? But this is New York City, so competition's tough. <laughs> so all of you should be proud, right? And Omarion, for the Excellence in Dance Award, And, yes, his, his, his companions here helped him be more excellent because they kept him on his toes. Because they were biting on his heels. And they're, they're still biting on his heels. And sometimes they pat him on the, they, yeah. So, right, you know, right, Javar, you give him a hard time. <laughs> so, um, the other one, um, unfortunately, you know, COVID is still here still getting us, and unfortunately, Ruby Guzman Perez was the recipient of the 4E Award. I just want to quickly say how fate, you know, you need a little bit of luck. So she, when she auditioned here, she auditioned in the summer after we held our regular auditions, there was no more space. I told Mr. Ryan, we got no more room. We're bursting at the seams. But when she auditioned, I was like, if you can make room, we'll take that one over there. And they made room, and she has been like, I'm here. And so she's been incredible. Uh, she's the spirit of the class. I mean, like, she's, she's rehearsal director. She does sprinting, to get the class. sprinting. She's the first, yeah, you know, never late, always the first one, always on top of everything, does everything. But really, it's the spirit of the class, right? The positive spirit that kept, you know, when you, when you see somebody like, she's like, yeah, let's go, you know? And, and um, so really, really, really someone that, you want on your team is a valuable player, is a valuable spirit, it's, it's this, this, the soul, right? When we, we talk about the Ailey spirit, we're talking about soul, she got soul. Oh, excuse me. So, um, and, and, and I, I think all the dancers here would agree that she definitely has earned the four E's um, and, is, and is a vital part of this wonderful team, this wonderful company, this wonderful group of exceptional students and very deserving of this wonderful award. And unfortunately, she's not here to receive it, but I will send her a wonderful video and, you know, and tell her all the wonderful things that she is. But again, thank you dancers so, so much for being incredible. And, and parents for getting them to dance classes when they were little. <laughs> Because that's the cha that's the challenge. It's not you know sitting in the dance studio waiting for them to finish class, right? It's a chore, but it was worth every bit because all of them can dance. <laughs> all right. The next up, we have our vocal department from the National Chorale, Miss Amy and um, here to honor all of our vocalists. Good evening, everyone. Um, congratulations, seniors, all of you, congratulations. Um, <clears throat> if I could give an award to each of my vocal students, I would for their dedication and their perseverance during these last years, which have been nothing short of challenging. But you all rose to the top like the cream in my coffee. <laughs> and I am super, super proud of you. <laughs> I 
I do have two very special awards um, to give out. The first is for vocal excellence. When I think of the student, I think of them as being persistent, present, consistent, and patience with the process, the process of not only vocal growth, but just growth as human beings. And this student allowed that growth to happen organically and uh, beautifully transitioned to this, what was already an amazing instrument uh, to the highest levels. She will be successful in all of her endeavors and she will shed a light onto music and the world. Congratulations, Sarah Pena. Another award this evening is for the four E's. This student uh, lights up a room with her smile and her energy. She's been an amazing team player amongst her peers, sharing knowledge, wisdom, and joy. She's always available for all, including myself, to lend a hand or just to smile. I uh, had one of my artist teachers tell me something that they overheard her say a few weeks back. And I thought <laughs> Mr. Truss would have said, that's a teachable moment. But what she said to her classmate, who was having a hard day, was, put that tear back in your eye and pull yourself together. I would like to congratulate Elena Gallup. Congratulations to all of our seniors. Hello, everybody. Whoa. Oh. My name is Jeff Statiel, director of musical theater. I, I paid them to be here. They're just cheering for me. But uh, seriously, uh, Rosie's Theater Kids, musical theater staff, congratulates all of the seniors this year. What an accomplishment. Uh, you're gonna hear repeatedly how proud we are of them for overcoming what, is, uh, what they've faced over these years. And uh, I congratulate all of the seniors in the class of 2022, and especially my dear musical theater students. Put the tear back. Put the tear back, got some awards. Um, you're a genuinely kind and uh, uh, generous class and I hope that over this last week's events you've been able to look at the students who are next to you, the team who's next to you and just appreciate them because this is an interesting part of your life where you get to um, you get an opportunity to look back at a chapter and uh, the next one is there for you. You're going to turn the page and move on but uh, I hope that you appreciate those who you see around you um, daily. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be a part of your journey. So thank you very much for, for letting me in. Now on to uh, two different awards. Um, it's a very difficult decision with such a talented and uh, wonderful and gifted class. Uh, but the first award is Excellence in Musical Theater Award. It's an annual award that is uh, uh, voted on by our staff. And uh, this person displays a mastery of voice, song, and dance, and the aspiration and talent required to pursue it at a higher level. Uh, this year's recipient is very gifted and talented musical theater performer with tremendous range. Over her four years as a musical theater performer, she has been consistently present and positively engaged, 
detail-oriented, and devoted to her craft. She is a model musical theater student who has big, who has big aspirations. We know that for sure. Um, her instructors at RT Kids describe her as a pleasure and a joy to work with. She gives 110%, 120% of the time. She possesses undeterrable passion. She's fearless in her risk-taking. Uh, and to this year's winner, we are excited to watch you in the years to come as you pursue your goals and ambitions at SUNY Cortland in the fall. Congrats to Elizabeth Fitzpatrick. And now for the award for Ease in Musical Theater. Uh, this is also an annual award, voted on by the staff. Um, this year's recipient is a four-year musical theater participant and has been an integral part of our family since day one. She's been as reliable a student as I've seen in my 13 years at PPAS, always leading with empathy, always engaged in classroom conversations and bringing an equitable approach to the collaborative process and always striving for excellence. Her instructors describe her as possessing an endless desire to grow, hardworking at all times, a strong actor who's not afraid of stillness and silence, superbly vulnerable in her work, and just a rare gem of a student. This year's recipient was also to note uh, the 2022 Adela and Larry Elow American Songbook High School Singing Competition winner. <laughs> And you will see her, if you purchase a ticket, you will be able to see her making her cabaret debut as a soloist at Lincoln Center in, in August. So to this year's winner, we are very proud of your enthusiasm, kindness, and talent, and how you express the four E's in, in your life. And we're excited to see what you do at Rutgers uh, Drama in the Fall. Congratulations. Congratulations to Julian Mistillo. Thank you. I am not Heather Lonzo, the director of the Waterwell Drama Program, but I'm going to speak on her behalf. Um, I, just a note on that, um, not something that she wrote, just in my own mind. Um, Waterwell is our partner for the drama program in the high school, but also the middle school program. And I feel like that's twice the size of any other partner, and I feel like they do twice as much work with the same amount of people of any other, any other partner. So partly why she can't be here tonight, just coming off of musical, middle school musical and partly running the professional company, they, they do so much. Um, so perhaps in a less dramatic fashion, the winner of these awards are named first, and then the speech is about them. So I'm gonna do it the way it was written. Um, after a voting process, like with uh, musical theater, the Waterwell Drama Program faculty is excited to present this year's Drama Award, and this is the drama, this is the Award of Excellence. Uh, this year's Drama Award to the wonderful Caitlin Kennedy Staggs. All right, stay, stay there, Caitlin, stay there. Now we're gonna, it's kind of nice this way. Now all the stuff that's said about you, we know exactly who you're talking about, right? Um, so over the last, Sorry, I'm gonna do my dramatic. <laughs> Over the last seven, yes, that's right, seven. She's one of our lifers, whole years, in the Waterall Drama Program. We have had the absolute pleasure to watch Caitlin grow into a dedicated, thoughtful, and engaged artist. Kate, Caitlin's deep love of acting and theater has propelled her to not only engage in her classwork with curiosity and drive, but to delve into every performance opportunity offered to her through the program of passion and openness. We are so proud of Caitlin's growth as a young actor and look forward to seeing her dive into a rich and fruitful, fruitful future in theater. So come on up, Caitlin. <laughs> Award for Excellence in Drama.
You could have grabbed the mic, Kayla. <laughs> um, Waterwall is also presenting a four E's award. Those are our core values here at PBAS. Similarly, the WDP faculty is extremely proud and honored to present Ellis Rubin with this year's four E's award. All right. All right. All right, Ellis. Let's, this is what was written about you. When, when thinking about this award, we are not only considering the four E's themselves, but also Waterwell's ethos of artist as citizen. This is an idea that challenges the artist to not only think about their role, uh, the role their art making has in a larger community and global context, but how they can approach all aspects of their lives through an equitable, empathetic, and engaged lens. Doing so is what true excellence looks like, no student embodies these ideas more fully than Ellis. Throughout his four years in the program, Ellis not only approached his art making through an engaged attitude that strives towards excellence, but forefronts the ideas of equity and empathy in his work outside of the program as well. We could not be more proud of your work, Ellis, and are honored to present you with this award tonight. Just, uh, just, a fine, just a final note, now, I'll speak on, she, she didn't write this, but I'll speak on Ms. Lanza's behalf, and you heard the other arts directors talk about how difficult it is to wean this down to two people. It is a challenge we hand to them. It is not their choice. They want to give more. Right, can we do four awards? And we say no. So it's, it, they always struggle with, with choosing those people. So. Um, th those that come out on top, you absolutely deserve it, but every one of these programs have so much to be proud of. Um, so thank you so much for the work that you do. Um, Ms. Testerman, you come back up. All right. All right, and now we're going to move into the academic awards. So here we have the science department. Oh. There, there are, okay. There are definitely more arts partners, let me just say that. Uh, Bally Tech and Joe Gregori uh, has for awards for that, that typically is in graduation. There's also MTB and SAB. Okay, there's a lot of ballet schools, okay? There's a lot of ballet schools, there's a lot of twirling going on here, and all of you have worked really hard, okay? So we're gonna move on to academic awards, uh, Mr. Gatton and Ms. Richley with the uh, science department, starting us off, and then to the math department. Good evening. Hello and welcome. Uh, on behalf of the science department, I'm here with Ms. Richley. Mr. Galino could not be here today, uh, but he, uh, he's with us in spirit. Uh, I will be presenting the science award first, and that is um, well, let's see. <laughs> how to begin. 3D printing of organs for organ transplant will happen one day. And I will not be surprised to find the winner of this year's Science Award having a role to play in its development, refinement, and implementation. Hint, hint. She has a long passion for science and medicine and medical technology. She has written articles for the school newspaper about these topics. She has demonstrated a drive and a focus in science that is unparalleled, constantly seeking deeper understanding and always wanting to learn more in every topic. She has excelled at the most demanding science classes. I have a quote from Mr. Galino. He describes her as a one in a billion student. Every single attribute that makes an accomplished scientist is obvious. 
natural talent, hard work, attention to detail, curiosity about the world around her, and a desire to succeed where others would stumble. Would you like to say a few words? Okay. This student is one of the most gifted people I've ever had the pleasure to have in my classroom. And I fully believe that if I had handed them a textbook and they would have done just as well. Um, I believe that I, it was a gift to watch her work, and I am honored that uh, Mr. Gatton and I can present this award to her. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Okay, uh, additionally, behind all these uh, accomplishments is a deeply compassionate and caring human being who wants more than anything to make the world a better place, focused on improving the lives of people with physical and medical uh, health challenges. She will pursue these goals in college, intending to major in mechanical engineering with a concentration in bioengineering. And please join us in celebrating the winner of this year's Science Awards, Serena Chang. <laughs> Who is in Paris right now? So we will continue. <laughs> All right, the four E's in science. Uh, I'll try not to be quite as wordy. If I had to pick a favorite E, it would be empathy, because I think all the others are simply logical consequences or derivatives of empathy. To have empathy is to engage with the world. To have empathy is to strive for equity. And excellence is simply impossible, ill-earned, or meaningless without the other E's. This year's winner of the four E's has exhibited empathy, engagement, equity, and excellence in all of her interactions with students and teachers alike. She has been a phenomenal science student. She has volunteered in numerous ways to help the science department and the school. Um, as a representative of the science department during parent nights, as a student teacher delivering science lessons in AP biology, as a frequent purveyor of fine baked goods that she shares with everyone. And then outside of science, she's been an enthusiastic photographer, a contributing member to the school newspaper, and more. I would like to present this award, which is very much deserved, to Shannon Donahue. The math award. After this, you can go home. Nothing much else to see. Um, I, and I came without a speech prepared, so I'm just going to extemporize. I uh, first met the recipient of the Excellence in Mathematics Award as a little tiny square on my computer screen. And a student said, oh, I was in school, can't be me. No. Um, and, and this person quickly proves that one can excel while being a little tiny square at a computer screen. Um, rose to the top of my pre-cap class last year. And this year, let me just first say, before I go any further, I had great seniors this year all across the world. I, I loved the seniors in my pre-cop class, and I had one of the best AP cop classes ever. And the winner of the math award uh, just rose, just separated themselves. Uh, I gave some pretty hard tests in AP Calc, and like everybody would get, like the highest score would be like a 91, except for this person who had come up with a 99 and made everybody else hate her. No, 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 they didn't hate her. They admired her because 
you can't possibly hate this person. Uh, and although she's not here to accept it, I'm very proud to give the Mathematics Excellence Award to Serena Chang. <laughs> I also have the four E's in Mathematics Award to present. Um, and this person really does e exemplify, that's another E, by the way, exemplify. Uh, all of, yeah, it should be the five E's. Um, all of them. Um, effort was one of the students who, I mean, you know, you seniors know that when it gets to the last few weeks of the year, you ease up a little bit. Not this student. I gave it finals. This student really prepared, really excelled, really worked hard. Uh, just absolutely nonstop throughout the entire year. Empathy would always, uh, I could tell just by the way she, she treated me when uh, my EP calc class got a little over exuberant. Sometimes did. But in a good way, she would sympathize. <clears throat> the equity was distributed across the school, uh, th particularly through her efforts to, to draw uh, attention to and explain uh, the culture of, of a minority that is often misunderstood and underrepresented, including putting together, a f helping to put together a fabulous assembly at the end of May. And all of this resulted in excellence in the top quarter of this spectacular AP Calc class. I'm very pleased to give the Four E's Award to Miss Emma Tom. Presenting um, Sanding Achievement in Foreign Language. And I do not have a speech, but um, I admire anyone who excels in Spanish because I love Spanish. Um, Greg Papadopoulos. Engagement, Empathy, Equity, and Excellence in Spanish is Omarion Burke. So Ms. Testerman and I together, jointly, are going to present Humanities Awards tonight. Humanities Excellence and the four E's in Humanities. Um, can I see which one? Uh, so this first student, um, I have had the pleasure of having this first student in class in ninth grade and 10th grade. She came into this school with ready to tell me, mm, mm, no, Mr. Devine, I don't think that's quite right. Um, no, Mr. Devine, I, I think you're pronouncing that wrong. Um, no, Mr. Devine, I think that you miscalculated my grade here. One more point. But every single time, I just thought, I love you for that. 
10th grade, same thing, came into our class, ready to work, ready to tell me where I was wrong. Then we went into quarantine, and one of the few students that every single day showed up on Zoom, ready to work, sometimes early, so we love her for that. This year, she had Ms. Testerman for 12th grade, and we fought a little bit over her, but um, we're happy to present this award to Ruby Perez Guzman. <laughs> So I, I always start out my class with saying nobody ever gets a hundred. And three of you all got a hundred this second semester and Ruby was one of them. So congrats to Ruby for that. Um, for our four E's award, uh, this is difficult in humanities because that's something we try and, and cultivate in our class discussions and really um, want to see in all of our students. And so this student in particular not only showed leadership uh, through class discussions, but showed vulnerability and was able to think through uh, the curriculum and ask questions and admit when she was wrong. Um, and that's something that um, is not easy to do. So without further ado, Miss Lizbeth Luciano and the four E's. So we're going to conclude the academic awards by having Mr. Ryan come up and announce our uh, Val and Sal and our School Legacy Award. So the valedictorian and salutatorian, these are the, the two highest grade point averages over the four years here at PBAS. If you are a lifer, that we don't count the middle school years, just to be clear. Uh, so it's the four, it's really three and a half years because you don't have your GPAs from the semester yet. Um, and they have a big role on Friday. So we're just gonna tell you who they are. I think our valedictorian is here. Maybe they're both here. Yeah, they're both here, they're both here. So our salutatorian of 2022, which is the second highest GPA, is John Powers. Oh, I'm sorry, come on, come on up, John, come on up. We're gonna give you the award now. All right, we're just, we're just talking about his speech. He's gonna edit a little bit. And our valedictorian uh, for 2022 is Anya Jimenez. All right, thank you. All right, um, so, I, so I just mentioned uh, the, the seven years, so we just, you know, Val Salas for four years, but we do have students that have been here for seven years. That is really wonderful in and of itself, um, to spend seven years with us here at PPAS. It is a big part of your secondary education. And we do give one particular award to one of our, what we call lifers, um, just because of all the quality that that person brings, which includes like the four E's and commitment and excellence to what they do, but they have that extra component that they've been here for seven years. And it's really my pleasure to announce this person that is receiving um, that award this year, and that is Ayla. Yeah. You make, you get on. <laughs> I, and I'll just, I'll just point out, it's a flame. The shape is a flame because it's like this everlasting flame. You've been with us. You, you shone brightly for seven whole years. I think Memorial Awards next. Memorial Awards. 
So we're going to bring up uh, Ms. Gindi, I think Mr. Vassallo. We have a number of um, memorial awards that are connected to people who were incredible contributors to our community. The award is in those people's names, and we give it to students that embody some of the same qualities that those people brought to our community. So we're going to have some people talk about those people that the award is named for, and then maybe some different people to talk about the students that are receiving it and why they embody those qualities. So Ms. Gindi, we're gonna do Froen Glass first. Come, come talk about Marilyn Froen Glass. Tell us about her. Okay. Okay. Hey, guys. <laughs> um, I am so, so excited to give the Marilyn Frauen Glass Memorial Award because Miss Glass, as we affectionately called her, uh, she was my mentor teacher here at PPAS many, many years ago. She passed away in 2004 and we shared room 307 together. I was a new teacher. She was always there to support me. I, uh, you know, there were so many things I had to learn, so many things I went through. She was always, always there. She was so optimistic, so bright, so caring, amazingly creative. She happened to have been a brilliant creative writer. Uh, she was a, a brilliant poet. Um, she was a visual artist. She taught creative writing here, she taught visual art, and she was also a special ed teacher. So in her memory, we have the Marilyn Frauen Glass Memorial Award, and I'm really, really so honored to give this award this evening to this student. Um, the award is given, in, in Ms. Glass's memory, it's for persistence, creativity, and honor. And I'm just going to let you know right now who that is. Um, this is, and, and Ms. Lanza and I uh, worked on this together. It's going to go to Ryan Jones. <laughs> so, <laughs> she is. Oh, yeah. you, Miss Jones, you have to hear why. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Because those three words are three attributes of you that are on the top of, we felt were on the top of your list, okay? So we thought they really, really exemplified you. Um, as a young artist, Ryan exudes creativity in all that she does. <laughs> Not only is she an incredibly talented actor, but a creator and a writer to her core. Over the years, has been, work, has been able to synthesize what she is learning in her, in her actor training to become an incredible theater maker across the board. Her resiliency is truly impressive, working hard to overcome barriers that no young person her age should have to, but doing so with so much grace and kindness. She approaches everything she does with love, openness, and a desire to embrace everyone's full humanity, which is wise and honorable beyond her years. I am so glad to learn that we all thought you were the right one to get this award. <laughs> and we know that you're going to do amazing things in your life. Congratulations. Oh, one more thing I have to say. This is so important. She took my Art of Beauty class. She will forever be one of my beauties. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mr. Vassal is going to come up and talk about the Carol Lunny Memorial Award. Uh, let's see. Um, I started working here in 1997, and one of the first persons I met was Carol Lunny in the main office. And uh, it, it seemed like I, was, I came in as a part-time artist teacher and I always needed the Xerox machine and I was always making lots of copies and I was always breaking the Xerox machine and there was Carol yelling at me, um, which came to be a thing between us. Uh, and eventually she taught me how to fix what I broke and I started, um, you know, getting better at it and I got uh, better at teaching and I kept listening to Carol. Now, a couple things about Carol was that she was here from the very, very beginning of PPAS. She came in at the start of the school. Her son was in the school. Alicia Keys was in the school. And so Carol goes all the way back to you know, the very beginnings of, of, of the place. And the Carol Lunny Award is about optimism and fortitude and spirit and service. And that was something that Carol brought to her work and her life and the main office every single day of her life. She was here early in the morning. She was here late in the afternoon when she needed to be here. And she ran the auditions and we got to do the auditions together and we worked together and we fought together and we um, laughed together. And, uh, at some point along the way, Carol got sick. And so she taught me about what it means to be strong in the face of, of dying. And she was just remarkable. And I learned a lot from her even when she was, she was very, very ill. Because she was strong and she had spirit and she really could make you laugh. So that was Carol Lunny. Um, PJ's gonna announce the award. Mr. Devine. So, when, all right, please, please, please. when I think about everything that Mr. Vasala just said, I think about how this award winner is really the embodiment of the dedication, quiet grace, someone that you can count on, someone that had that really kind of focus in class, someone that you could throw something at and say, all right, uh, we, we need to do this right now in senior leadership, and she would say, on it. She was a, a force to be reckoned with that I don't think anyone really saw coming. So this award is for Jaslyn Carreras. We have one more memorial award, and this one comes from our alumni and friends uh, organization, our PPAS alumni and friends, and I hope, 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 after you graduate, I hope you join alumni and friends. It's a wonderful group of students um, who want to do things to continue to help the students at PPAS. Um, they sponsor the Foster Burton Memorial Award. And Foster was one of my very first students at PPAS. Um, I taught creative writing here. He used to come to class always with a big, big smile on his face. Um, it's, this is a community service award. It's for leadership and community service. And that's who Foster was. If you needed help, Foster was there. And he wanted to be a police officer and was, all, was going to school. Um, and tragically, he was killed um, in a motorcycle accident unrelated to training as a police officer. So in his memory, we have this award. So uh, this award is actually going to come with a scholarship. <laughs> and we have a nice uh, pl uh, plaque here. And Dr. Davis is, and I are going to tell you a little bit about this recipient, because we're real excited. So I'm going to just give you some attributes 
of this person. Personable, kind, dependable, smart, intuitive, organized, clever, dedicated, brave, unique, efficient, loyal, <laughs> mature, innovative, influential, inclusive. She is a born leader who always exhibits a wealth of potential and knowledge. She is able to recognize when others may need, a, uh, when others may need assistance, and she always proves to be a big support. So, do you, would you like Dr. Davis to announce who this person is? So I'm excited to announce that this student is Sky Joseph Richards. <laughs> Counseling department, we especially wanted to come up here and speak today because as new staff members, I'm Dr. Davis, Ms. Osborne couldn't be here tonight, but she's also part of the counseling department. Sky really helped us to transition into PPAS. She helped to assist us in learning the school culture and was spearheading in many of our events, such as our first Pride, our Mental Health Awareness Week, our Sexual Assault Week, she just really took the realms and grabbed other students together and really made the council and department a strong force this year. We thank you and you're truly deserving of this award. And now for the club awards. Mr. Gatton and Ms. Khan, if you want to come up. And... If you haven't noticed, your children do a lot here at PPAS, and so we are so honored to celebrate all of their hard work. Senior peer tutors. If you tutored this year. Um, yeah. Uh, Woo! You okay? I'm gonna put a light on the stairs. Several student reps and I started the PPS peer tutoring program this year. And we want to recognize uh, Kamsani, who tutored <laughs> in chemistry, Shannon uh, Donahue, for volunteering to tutor uh, SAT prep, uh, Angela Shi, who is a TA in my humanities class every week. Um, Maya Wetzler, who is a TA in pre-calculus every week. Um, Jordan Ori, um, and Sophia Chatsalias. Oh, uh, for geometry uh, office hours. Uh, it was wonderful to see the commitment and the enthusiasm that these students um, brought to a really difficult year. Your year had the most experience in high school, right? Before the pandemic. And so you helped freshmen, sophomores, juniors, even seniors um, who needed help. Uh, and last but not least, I want to welcome to the stage John Powers. <laughs> John Powers was our senior 
PPS peer tutoring rep, and um, he's like working with um, another co-teacher. <laughs> Um, John, you showed such initiative and great ideas beyond what we ac could accomplish this year. But um, you all, this is for everybody. Um, where you're going, they're very lucky to have you. Um, and remember that this is a transition year for you. And now you know, there are people just like you who are willing to give time and um, share their expertise with you if you need help. Okay, so thank you so much for serving our community. All right, good evening again. Um, hello. Uh, this is the 11th year of the PPAS Voice at, uh, at our school. Um, we've, uh, hands down, this has been the year where the newspaper has been the most independent, effective, and active that they've ever been. Um, and it's, Interesting to note over the years that as the outside world has sort of uh, imposed itself on our little enclave uh, and had profound effects on our consciousness, our school newspaper has reflected those changing priorities. They've awakened in us a need, a drive, a desire to engage in the struggles of our time and use our voices, our PPAS voices, to communicate, to rally, to educate our public around the political and social issues both in the broader society and in the arts world. For a small paper like ours operating as a club and trying to fit in meetings during lunch amid the myriad competing demands for their time in academic and performing arts and social relationships, the challenges of getting a newspaper out each month has been enormous. The newspaper award this year goes to an individual who is the most responsible for making all of this happen. Through her leadership and vision, her organization and communication skills, she assembled a phenomenal team who worked together to expand the scope and the reach of the newspaper and set a very high bar for next year to maintain that level of excellence. Congratulations and my undying respect and gratitude to this year's winner of the Newspaper Award, Emma Tom. So we're going to do the leadership awards. Part of what makes our job easier is having students that can actually initiate and facilitate and um, come together to and have get it done. Yeah, get it done. Pretty much. I was going to try and rhyme again, but I couldn't figure out a word. So there we go. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with um, honoring uh, two. The yearbook, Mr. McAndrew is not here, so we'd like to um, recognize those of you parents, I don't know if you saw the yearbook they received today. It is gorgeous and thick. Um, and although it was difficult to choose, um, again, as you see, students have to take their lunch time to complete a lot of these tasks and late nights and during vacation time um, to get this done. Uh, this year, we'd like to recognize Miss Nadia Chase and Jaslyn Carreras. Okay, and we're gonna have them stay up here because next we're gonna go through leadership. So uh, when I call your name, if you can um, come up. These are the gems who uh, helped organize all the senior events, the senior fundraising. We were able to raise uh, close to $5,000 this year, which helped um, 
at least 10 students be sponsored for senior trip and prom, um, as well as acknowledging um, all, all the hard work in, in community building that we've done. So, uh, Nadia and Jaslyn, of course, Ruby Perez Gomez, who's not here as well, Guzman, sorry, I knew I was gonna do that. Um, Elizabeth Luciano, um, Elizabeth Fitzpatrick, Kevin Tornello, Emma Tom, Caitlin Drasbeck, Michaela Williams, and Ryan Farley. Oh, I know, okay. And there's um, two other students we'd like to recognize. Each year we have a senior council as well as a student leadership. Uh, and two folks, we started out I think with 14 wanting to be in senior council and kind of dwindled down uh, to these two who were um, here for us every day uh, and creating the awesome events that we had. Anything else, Mr. Devine? Okay, phenomenal. Okay, all right, so without further ado, that's Jade Bowen Jean and John Powers. everyone here on the stage we couldn't have done this year without you we have senior sweatshirts we had a prom we had senior trip and I know Saha you're in the there was uh, someone in here that we didn't get that the last two years and so it was such to do it with you all it was just a real honor and pleasure so thank you for all your hard work and we love you okay um, I'd also like to recognize um, Samaya, I know you're out there, um, and Anya, the, uh, and the Young Lords Collective, like they have been doing so much work outside of school and the community service that they've provided for, for a lot of uh, your, your children and peers here. So I just wanna also acknowledge those two students as well, okay? And then, Mr. Devine, you're doing Equity Awards? Yeah, you guys can sit down. Yeah, 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 sorry. So you guys, you've heard a lot about the four E's, engagement, empathy, and equity, together equal excellence. And this, before we go into the, um, the the ropes that we're giving you for graduation, which has certain uh, merit to them. I think this is the last award. And it's, oh, there's one after this, sorry. This is a super important award. I just wanna talk a little bit about the work of equity. There's, equity happens at very different levels at PPS. It happens at the classroom level. It happens in the, the counseling office, in the learning center. Um, and it manifests in different ways. But there is one way that it's very formalized. Uh, led by uh, drama teacher Greg Parenti. It is a di district who can't be here tonight because he's ill, but is, he, he would be presenting this award. But it is a district incentive, and what I mean by district, I mean Manhattan High School. So we have students from PBAS that meet regularly and then bring ideas, creativity, and contributions to the entire Manhattan High School district, share those ideas, come back with um, ideas that they've bounced around these other leaders from different schools and then lead implementation of things that happen at PPAS, whether it be a lesson that everybody does, um, an assembly that everyone um, gets to view or a virtual assembly where people view things and they, they have done incredible work over the years. Um, we, new people come in from year to year and sit on this team and we had two really special people um, one who will take her work of equity to college at Howard University, uh, Michaela Williams. Uh, Michaela. And the other who will take his work to Vassar College is Ella, Ellis Rubin. Come on, Ellis.
All right, Ellis, thank you so much. This final award um, is presented by the United uh, Federation of Teachers, the UFT. Um, but rather than talking about the award, I want to talk about the student. So, and the 6,000 awards there. So, this student um, came to PPAS as a sixth grader. She was with us for seven years. When I started working here, she was in eighth grade. And on the very first day, I could tell she was very much like, and who are you, and why are you here, and what do you need, and how can I help you as my teacher? And she continued some of that. And at first I thought, this is kind of odd. Usually students are like, hi, how are you? But this student was very much grilling me. And over time, I realized this person has the biggest heart, the most dedicated and fiercely loyal attitude about her friends, her family, and her school. It, there's a lot to say about her, but you all know so much about her, so let's just clap for her. Lana Priester. <laughs> Okay. Graduation on Friday is about recognition of everyone in the class, but we will also recognize people in this room for certain bars that you met. Um, there are a lot of you that made these incredible merits, and what we're going to do is read to you your names. You're going to come up and you're going to pick up chords. And the chords are of different colors on the table. You see there's red and silver and black and, and yellow and blue. And I'm just going to tell you what they are. Read your name. You're just going to come up and stay up on stage until you get that chord in hand. And you will wear those at graduation around your, um, your uh, gown. Um, OK, are we ready? OK. Uh, we talk about this thing called advanced regents. It's extra, extra regents exams, but then there's advanced regents with honors, which means that you hit a certain grade on, across all the eight regents exams that you took to get to the advanced regents. And that is what the red cord is for. These are the people who are wearing red cord for advanced regents with honors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through pretty quickly, all right? So, so sorry, I said we would we'd hold your applause till the, to the end of the list. Ellis Rubin, Anne Hart, Serena Chang, Shannon Donahue, come on up. Luke Masonet, Gregory Papadop, Papadopoulos, Jenna Tom Keel, John Powers, Jaden Galen, Vincent Philp, Brian Cusick, and Mia Plantoni. people who earn high honors. This is a GPA that is higher than a 94. Um, that's across your high school years up through the first semester of your senior year. You will get both a black cord and, Ms. Ms. Testerman, you also get the yellow and blue cord. That yellow and blue cord is the National Honor Society cord. And part of our policy through your years is that if you hit high honors, you'd be automatically inducted into National Honor Society. So you'll get two chords if you hear your name now. Ellis Rubin, 
Ann Hart, Serena Chang, Shannon Donahue, Luke Mason A, Gregory Papadopoulos, Jenna Tomkeel, John Powers, Jaden Gallen. Sound familiar, right? You guys come on up, keep listening. Anna Snellgrove, Jack Morris, Noah McCoslin, Nadia Chase, Luella Cox, Caitlin Dravsik, Ruby Perez, Mia Platoni, Emma Tom, Elena Galeb, Anahit Inziguilian. I apologize if I pronounce anyone's name incorrectly. Maya Burshad, Nicoletta Beshta, Sumeya Bubal, Sophia Shatsilius, Ashley Giambroni, Anya Jimenez, Sadie Martinez, Jordan Ori, Presley Wexelman, Elizabeth Fitzpatrick, Luca Tuana, Elizabeth Luciano, Nisi Toro Bermeo, Isabella Burke, to Tony David, Kathy Zia, Justin Zhang, Max Barker, Clementine Bure, Alessandra Montesino, Eliu Edinger. Okay, thank you. All right, well done, Elio. All right, finally, this is the straight up advanced regents, which is represented by the silver cord. This is gonna be a lot of repeats. I'm gonna go quickly, so listen up. Ellis Rubin, Ann Hart, Serena Chang, Shannon Donahue, Luke Masonet, Gregory Papadopoulos, Jenna Tomkeel, John Powers, Jaden Gallen, Anna Snellgrove, Jack Morris, Noah McCoslin, Nadia Chase, Luella Cox, Caitlin Drabsik, Ruby Perez, Mia Platoni, Emma Tom. Sorry, Caitlin, am I saying your name wrong? <laughs> Anahit Inzigulian, Maya Burshad, Nicoletta Beshta, Sumeya Bubal, Sophia Shatsilas, Ashley Giambroni, Anya Jimenez, Sadie Martinez, Jordan Ori, Presley Wexelman, Elizabeth Fitzpatrick, Luca Tuana, Elizabeth Luciano, Nisi Toro Barmeo, Isabella Burke, Tony David, Kathy Zia, Justin Zeng, Max Barker, Clementine Bue, Alessandra Montesino, Elio Edinger, Vincent Philp, Brian Cusick, Jonas Tutaj, Dylan Pierzina, Jade Bowen Jean, Omarion Burke, Jaslyn Carreras, Jenna Carreri, Mia Platoni, Angela Z, Michaela Williams, Brianna Agosto, Jasmine Daly, Catherine Borel, Adriel Duke, Anastasia Arokina, Sky Joseph Richards, Mariam Kamsani, Zoe Katajas, Eliana Kuhner, Desmarie Marte, Anders Peterson, Lana Priester, Mariam Shalambrids, Kat Karima Carson, Julia Lang, Sarah Pena, Ela Huguenot, Navani Perez, Wilson Ramirez, Adam Cabo, Emily DeGenero, Jonah Diamond, Ryan Farley, Ethan Huffman, Samantha Ortiz, Maximilian Woot, Spencer Rosen, Casey Walfall, Vincenzo Ferulio, Jason Gillot, Iviana Harris, Diego Jimenez Pons, Jillian Mustillo, Gabriel Oliveira, Isabella Redder, Sofia Santiago, Amanda Siri, Kevin Torello, Jack Morris, Rachel Ford, Geraldine Ger Almonte, Nathan Ayala, Ivy Kong, 
Julianne Lau, Jaheem Wilson, Enzi Martin, Michael Torres, Maya Wetzer, Jamie James, Jamie James, Jalen Rivera, Cole Rosenfall, Skyla Corporan, and Maya Burchard. That is a lot of advanced regents. Congratulations. Okay, so, so you guys are holding those, but please take them back on Friday as part of your cap and gown. So when you're getting ready, you regalia yourself with those colors um, so we can celebrate that merit again in front of family and friends that aren't here tonight. Just a quick note about Friday. Um, we are live streaming uh, for family and friends who can't be here. There is an unfortunate rule, the vaccination rule, that even if you, students who are graduating are not vaccinated, you can participate, but nobody else can. So if there's somebody in your family who's not vaccinated, they can watch the live stream and then you use your four tickets for people who are vaccinated and come and participate. Um, it is here. We will stage in the black box at noon. Uh, the ceremony is at three. I'm super excited to be able to do that thing where I get to graduate you all. Um, and I think, Ms. Testerman, do we conclude the evening? That concludes the evening. Thank you so much for coming. We'll see you all on Friday. <laughs>